and happy Indigenous Peoples Day. My name is Karee Peterson-Smith and I am the Michael Ratner Middle East Fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies. Oh. Buenas tardes, gracias por... It is my absolute uh, It's a great pleasure for... Conversation with Ofrene, the struggle to stay in Honduras. I want to begin by acknowledging where I am located in Boston on the lands of the Massachusetts and Wampanoag people, peoples. The Institute for Policy Studies offices are located in the place called Washington, DC in Piscataway lands. On this day and every day, we extend our solidarity to indigenous peoples everywhere, including and especially our neighbors in the places where we live and work and their ongoing struggles for self-determination. Today's conversation is one of a four-part series organized by IPS called Displacement, Migration, Borders, and Resistance. Last week's event on displacement featured a conversation about Haitians, Afghans, Palestinians, and the many people uprooted by climate change, the challenges they face, and the ways they are resisting. Please look forward to a video of that conversation coming soon to the IPS website. Next week, we will have a conversation called Biden and the Border, Immigration and Border Policy under Biden. It will feature today's host, Nana Giamfi, Executive Director of the Black Alliance for Just Immigration, or BAJI, in conversation with Naomi Paif, Associate Professor of Criminology, Law and Justice in Global Asian Studies at the University of Illinois, Chicago. The two of them in conversation about the reality of Biden's approach to US 
migration policy and the border. That is on Tuesday, October 19th at 6.30 Eastern time. And then on Tuesday, October 26th, I will be in conversation with Harsha Walia, scholar of borders and resistance and author of the book yeah. I'm doing border imperialism. This has got to be one of the worst. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, as I, I just say again, all this information is on the events page at ips-dc.org. Now, with that, I want to turn our attention to today's incredibly timely conversation with Ofrene. We have seen severe political, economic, and social crises in Central America, particularly in El Salvador, Guatemala, and especially Honduras in recent years that are making life incredibly difficult for people residing in the region and leading many to migrate elsewhere. We know that the very United States that has invested in borders between Honduras and the US and in so-called immigration enforcement against Central Americans and other migrants here bears tremendous responsibility for the very situations that so many people are navigating and fleeing. Today, we focus on the Black and Indigenous Garifuna people in particular, their conditions and their resistance. We are honored on this Indigenous Peoples Day to have members of OFRANE, the Black Fraternal Organization of Honduras, to discuss the incredibly difficult situation they face and their resistance in ways that others can stand in solidarity with them. Ofrene is being honored this week uh, with the Latelier Moffitt Human Rights Award, which IPS awards annually. Uh, we're honoring them for their incredible work and resistance. This year's ceremony is Wednesday evening and you can learn more about that on our website at ips-dc.org. I want to introduce the general coordinator of OFRENE, Miriam Miranda, and OFRENE human rights defenders, Carla Garcia and Jillian David. In conversation with them will be Nana Giamfi, the lawyer, activist, and executive director of the Black Alliance for Just Immigration, or BAJI which is a key leader in calling attention to and standing up to the assault on black migrants that the US is carrying out. And now, uh, gratefully, I will hand it over to Nana. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Curry. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you to the Institute for Policy Studies for hosting this important conversation. Really excited to have this conversation. Always glad to be connected to our Garifuna family making sure that we lift up the issues that they are facing both at home and in the United States. I wanna thank you, Miriam, Carla, Jillian, and Afrene for joining us today to talk about this really critical conversation. What is happening with the Garifuna people? Hopefully people will hear and they'll be inspired to be of assistance and to help. One of the things that we talk about often with Baji is the invisibilization of black migrants. So wherever we are, there is a, an invisibilization that happens. And certainly we hear so much about um, Central Americans, Central America, whether it's migrants that are coming or what's happening in individual countries. And yet we don't hear about the Garifuna. So there may be some people who are watching, listening right now, who do not actually know who the Garifuna are. They know there's some people with that name and that's about it. And so, Carla, if you could just help us to, to have an understanding of who are the Carifuna. Ah, muy buenas tardes. Muchísimas gracias Good por la Good afternoon. Thank you so much for 
the invitation that you extended to us to offer an aid, to talk a little bit more about our culture, our the beauty of the human being that exists within the Garifuna community and giving us the space to share with the world of who we are. My name is Carla Garcia. I am the coordinator of international relations of the fraternal um, organization of Frané. Uh, it's a volunteer job that I do it for my community with the Ofrané because Ofrané not only works for a lot of people have heard that is to reclaim our territory, our land, and Ofrané also defends the lives, not only the lives of, pe of a Garifano people, but the Garifano human being and the Mother Earth. I said that because Ofrané takes care together with the Garifano people. We take care of the land, the ocean, the woods, the natural resources, and we try to create spaces for alternative medicine and to be in communion with all the genders of human being and tries to set an example of how to get ahead as a community. And now to the question about the Garifuna community. The Garifuna community is a community that it was born in the island of San Vicente. We have a mother, indigenous mother and African uh, father, but they're both were born in the island of San Vicente. And put the ex because of the English crown, there was a war for over uh, many, many years, a war that we lost with the English and a portion of Garifuna people, the basically the leaders and members of the army, of the struggle army, they were exiled into the uh, by the coast of Honduras. In Honduras, we have the island of Rugatan, and from then on, the Garifuna community um, got into agreement with the, the Spanish uh, crown. And you can see in the Atlantic coast, you can see all of the coast, Garifuna people, we're at the border with Guatemala and Nicaragua and beyond that, there are Garifuna people in Guatemala in Nicaragua in Belize. There's a big Garifuna community that's still growing in the United States. We have also Garifuna people in Europe. So we're everywhere. We're trying to be who we are. It's always important to say that the Garifuna people did not suffer slavery, but suffered so many wars, attacks, displacement. We're talking about immigration and our African father was stolen from, from Africa to bring it to America. Some of them um, were able to escape from the boat and some of them arrived to San Vicente and then also escaped slavery from the English crown. And that's how we've been running away and being displaced nowadays from our land, from our territory, because the Honduran government is forcing us to leave our land because um, our land right now is in auction. And, but there is a growing community of Garifuna people in the United States, but like Nana mentioned that it's been invisibilized and we can talk more about the Garifuna community, but in general terms, it's, we are a human um, heritage, uh, a human heritage that the UNESCO has declared that, and their language, their culture, the gastronomy, dance, and most importantly, it's a community that is still um, living in union with, the, with, the, with nature, Mother Earth. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for grounding us in the humanity. Thank you for grounding us in the connection to the earth that the Garifuna culture um, has and, you know, for really highlighting the ways in which the culture is distinct and different. Um, you know, when we, in the United States, Black people are Black people. And often there isn't space given for the distinctions, the different ways that we are Black. And so I really thank you for um, sharing that with us and giving people a better understanding. 
And so, Miriam, Carla talked about, you know, so many attacks that have happened against the Garifuna people. And you've said the, that before. In 2009, the United States made Honduras into a political laboratory. Can you please explain what this meant in 2009 and what it means today for Hondurans and Garifuna people in particular? Bueno, muchísimas gracias. No sé si me escuchan porque tengo algo aquí medio. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? I have something here very weird in my screen, but I just want to appreciate Nana. First of all, that you are here with us today. Today, we have the privilege to be women to be in this forum. So this says a lot about the powerful, the power of black women. Thank you, Jillian, for being here as well. Carlita and all of you from the, the Institute of Political Studies and also for, the, for recognizing our struggle, our work. Um, through Ofrene, and I want to be very clear, this is a topic that that we have not talked about it globally, what that meant the obstruction of the institution of Honduras from the get-go when we went out on the streets for the struggle for the institutions of um, Honduras. We went out on the street with Integucigalpa and other um, organizations of social justice. And we talked and talked with so many other leaders that this, the, the coup that happened in 2009, at the beginning of the 21st century, that it was not spoken into greater dis dimension. Not only that a lot of people just denied this. They did. They denied what it meant, what the coup meant within our institutions, because we had a democratic government, and then it suffered a coup to that. And we thought this was a new way of of colonialism or invasion or establish the colonialism that we were already living. So that that's what I meant about the laboratory, a political laboratory. Um, and also in 2012, there was another coup that, that when the Juan Orlando Hernandez, which is the current president, who was the president of Congress, there was a coup to that to the constitution because so many magistrates, they, they decided to baptize the constitution the way they, they want to bend it. And we talked about what that meant. And because they were not dead people, because usually when there is a coup d'etat, there are your dead people, casualties. But in this case, we didn't see anything. But then we see 10 years later, that was the beginning of the destruction of the institution to become Honduras and have political experiments uh, in other countries. So there's no institution in Honduras today, but also it has had a collateral effect that we can see that we've been seeing these crises in Honduras. It's a country which uh, it's been a decade since the, the coup d'etat that we've seen massive migration to the north. And this is a response, a response to, to all of that. And also they, they, the, the state is coming after our land, is trying to displace people and, and give it to the transnational corporations. And we'll see how they're approving all of this. Um, and, as a matter of fact, it's on the 16th of this month. They're going to auction all of the lands, the territories. And this can only happen when there has been consecutive uh, coup d'etat. This is nothing new. 
So there was in 2009 to 2012, and then there are electoral 20 and 17 where Orlando, where they did an illegal, illegal act that he imposed himself to be to continue to be the president. So we see a major crisis that we're seeing right now. So I'm going to finish with this with this question. I'm going to answer this question is that we were not we we're trying to put this in perspective as a social movement, but you can also put this in perspective uh, globally or in Latin America about can see the movements. What are movements that happen in Latin America? We didn't see that there was um, the right of having a democracy as a state, but then we started to see that there was a plan, there was a pact that they've been trying to do this to, they're going after one, one uh, government, one power after another. Now, what we've seen a lot, what we're seeing right now, we're seeing some countries that are in crisis. And what we are facing right now is that the authorities, uh, where they are, where they're trying to it, it's almost they treating people like um, a football game and how they reform the criminal process because we're, so what does it mean to fight for the, the Garifuna people um, when you're going to protest. Now you're criminalized, you go to jail for six, 10 years. So the, we saw that last Thursday, not only that, but this is, they just open, they have an open letter to invite all of the corporations to come and invest. So today the state, once they approve the, those reforms, it establishes that the indigenous people and black people can be displaced in the name of the national interest because it is so the state can 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 just erase that community displace that community right a whole community we're not just talking about land or um but this is what ge what's generated the constitution in honduras it shouldn't have happened this and this cannot happen in any other country absolutely absolutely and thank you for that because there is a pattern we know that there's a pattern in the ways that and the united states is a part of that pattern we cannot pretend that that's not the case as well as multinational corporations being the pattern of displacing people displacing Garifuna people, displacing indigenous people, and then turning around and not wanting those same people to come into the countries, right? So it's like, you are there. That's why people are coming here. And that not being um, clear in terms of the way that the policies are playing out, um, immigration policies in the United States. So I want to go to you, Yilian. We have just heard laid out by Miriam what is happening, right? And the ways in which people are being pushed out, pushed back, attacked. But we also know that wherever you find oppression, you will find resistance. People are going to resist. And the Garifuna have been continuously just the embodiment of resistance and resilience as they face these attacks. And we know that there have been many assassinations. There's been this criminalization of protest um, and of human rights activists that have resulted in deaths and resulted in you know, trauma to the Garifuna people. Can you talk to us um, about what human rights defenders are doing, Garifuna human rights defenders, what kind of work are they doing um, at home and what kind of pressures are they facing? Good morning to all of my colleagues. Thank you for the space. 
for us to use social media um, it, this way. It's the best option that we have. Definitely, we can reach out to many other people, even though some of them won't be able to to watch it right away. But then we can share it afterwards or to reach out to as many people as we can. So to work with Afrone, with uh, Afrone, uh, the organization, fraternal organization of Honduras as part of um, the youth people. It's surprising because each day we are excited with what we see with the technology and everything that we see to be up to date the, what's dangerous for your community. Ofrone is an organization um, of uh, community base that defends the, the, the rights of Garifuna people and in, in social people and collectively and not just the Garifuna people. We fight for the economic rights, territorial rights, and trying to find the self-determination, autonomy, because historically we've been suffering this, uh, this historical injustice that we're talking about. It took us to Sumla because our compañeros are being persecuted, disappeared, assassinated, and process, criminal process, and we don't have any response from the government and offering it. The, the way of how they measure this, we are a peaceful community. Oh, they're, they're black. Oh, they have weapons, dangers. No, we are a very pacific community. We are guided by our ancestors, our ceremonies, our cultural. So what we're trying to do is We've been put claims. We know that there is a Department of Cultural Justice in Honduras. We try to go and sue them, but nothing happens national. So when we see that there is no response from the national perspective, then we reach out to the international um, laws, which is the uh, inter-African. So we've won two cases, the Triunfo de la Cruz and Punta Piedra, and for that, our compañeros Triunfa Cruz have been displaced, disappeared, and also Punta Piedra and Antonio was assassinated. Why? Why? Because we are pressured so that the state can abide by the sentences that we have won, and they don't want to carry out that. Instead, they are assassinating for those who are pressured to abide by the sentence. They, and also we started four more cases, case of San Juan, Travesia, Calles Cochinos, and Ley de Pupida. So these are that Ofrane does. This is the actions that we take to be able to be heard. And thank you to our ancestors who allowed, ancestors that allowed that this an institution that doesn't belong to the state can get so far um, to defend our territory. And these are some of the solutions we're trying to, to do something with our community because certain people um, are not able to do this. So that's why we keep doing this work and we keep resisting this way. Our communities have been affected. And there was a law, Article 104, uh, sorry, it's 107 that, uh, that protected the territories that there was a law that says you cannot sell any territory to foreigners. Oh, and then the, they ratified this article and then they started to sell land territory in an indiscriminate way. So, because now they're able to do whatever they want. So what resources we have as an organization, it's the con convene or OET that protects indigenous people. That's the tool that we use to call on the state and say that they're violating our rights. So this is the current struggle that we have and thank you for the space in here. We will continue. Thank you so very much. And yes, thanks to the ancestors that we have the power and, and the resilience to be able to continue to push back 
you know, when you're talking, I'm thinking about, you know, uh, you're talking about attacks on people, you're talking about attacks on the culture, you're talking about attacks on land, just wholesale attack on the Garifuna people and other indigenous people in Central America. And it's, so it's not shocking and surprising that you have people that need to leave. Uh, many of those people needing to leave because of the violence that they're going to face and that they've been facing based upon their political activity, based upon um, their insistence on keeping the land, on holding on to the land and holding on to the culture. And so when Vice President Kamala Harris went to Guatemala in June of this year, if you remember, she I'm sure you who can forget, she delivered a message to Central Americans consider, considering migrating to the United States and just basically said, don't come you know, don't come. Now, of course, the vice president is a woman of Caribbean heritage herself, whose parents came, which is how she was able to be vice president, and who has been put in charge of the border um, issues for the United States. And so when you saw this, uh, our, the vice president of the United States, a black woman, a Caribbean woman, daughter of immigrants, saying, don't come, starting with you, Carla, what, what came through your mind? A mí me gustaría más que nada. I would like more than anything. I would like to speak at the end uh, about what the vice president in the hammer Kamala said. But it's important for us to to talk about the situation because have been attacked in uh, the physical appearance, our territory, our spiritual. There is um, no uh, people in the community and the Garifuna community have not been attacked. It's important to remember that the first caravan that arrived, it was under the government of Barack Obama, which Joe Biden was the president back then, who's now the president. So it's important to recognize that the first caravans were brought by based on, on, on lies when she said about why in, to understand the context of that there is a pattern, there is a plan, because this the issue that we live in Honduras that goes beyond borders. I worked with 67 women and 10 children where people came into the community. We couldn't identify them. They went to every community, every Garifuna community. There were 53, and they went on door to door, and they went in the um, schools, high schools, or they tell their parents, come, come to the U.S., come with your children to the U.S. When you cross the border, you will put your kids in the school, and the Obama government will protect you. This is what these members of the Garifuna community, they thought there was a true that they left there. We had schools, there were schools and these schools were emptied because all of those children were on the way from to Mexico in the US. So it's important to re remember that when this woman, when I arrived to the Mexico US border and the smugglers or coyotes, um, they turned these women to the immigration. And so that's when Barack Obama, they sent lawyers at the border and these women received the advice. This lawyer said, you can leave your children in the US and you can, the parents can go back to Honduras. And when these kids will turn 18, they will be able to petition their parents. So that's when we started to, to notice how they started to appropriate our kids, our children, and, and to, to take them, to steal them from their culture, from their tradition. So the Garifuna, people, it's not a name, culture, or or dance, or struggle. If we don't have the land, the territory, where we know that it's it's aligned with our ancestors, with our spirituality, we don't exist. We don't exist as a Garifuna community. So we see now that these governments, they 
they take the youth, they take the, the women uh, who are in the age of reproducing. So what's going to happen to the future? Then there was another wave of immigrants when we see the indigenous people of Guatemala. Let's not forget that. And then there was another wave of immigrants where we see indigenous people from El Salvador. And lastly, now we started to hear in the US, we hear in the news, we don't hear about Honduras, Salvador, Guatemala, we see the triangle, the North. Then we see this admission, there's a deficit. They, these lawyers have so many, much work. The judges have so much work. There's so much money moving around with all of this migration. And uh, as a matter of fact, the first wave of, immigra of immigrants, they gave them a brace bracelet to, to wear a bracelet, this woman. So when they were incarcerated, they uh, gave them the choice to get a bracelet to go out. So when this woman hear about when they were they at the border and they ask them, do you want to be part of this program to wear a bracelet um, in your ankle? Then we can release you and you can go with your family. So these women, they, they accepted, they sign that electronic bracelet that will track them down. So what they did is they, um, they signed that and then th these women, they were an experiment, a guinea pig experiment with the bracelet now that it's, these women are not just wearing this bracelet within the US, but outside of the US. So we have to talk about our people since 2013 on, they haven't been gone to, to court about their cases. Many of them had a case, many of them didn't. Some of them were able to go to, to court and since 2013, they go every two years and they ask them, come back in two years, you can get a, a work permit. Those of you who know, who are in the US, if somebody is able to get a work permit, it's not enough to support a family. Beyond that, there's more attacks, but let's go back about what we were saying when our people were migrating, what they were fleeing violence, they were fleeing gangs. They never said that they were coming from Garifuna community, that they're being displaced from their communities and so many people wanted to work, wanted, or wanted to keep this, this narrative. And they didn't want to talk about the, the issue of women with uh, this ankle bracelet. This, they didn't want to talk that these um, women being displaced. This, these lawyers told the woman, oh, your case is different. Um, get out of that group and do not join Ofrane. Do not share your problem with Ofrane. And now the issue of immigration is out of control because now these immigrants are not coming from the black communities or Garifuna and other places in, in the caravans became increasingly big. And now someone that can reach to, so now, reach Guatemala, but it's important to mention that even the, the US is supporting Honduras. So there's nothing that says that the vice president comes and, and says that people shouldn't migrate. And so Kamala Harris, the only thing it says doesn't do anything about it, just says, don't come here. I'm yeah. trying, I'm trying to, to have an order of everything, but I want the, the government of US to review of what really is happening because um, if they wanted to displace people from their communities because they have an intention with their, with their land, with their property, and now things are out of hand, we will see how this will turn out and how this will be resolved. And lastly, I want to, to 
touch the topic of refugees because the Garifuna community, I can say this completely. I did not say this, but I live in New York and there is an organization of lawyers that um, work on immigration and refugees from Syria. They they reach out to Ofrane so of Ofrane can start working on a law project that they can allow that every Garifuna to say that I'm um, Garifuna and automatically they have the status of a refugee within the country. So we know that a refugee cannot go back to their territories. As an Ofrane, what we're trying to do is trying to recuperate, to defend our territory and leave that to our kids. So this program of refugees, they leave, they give out some money. They, there's a lot of money there. So if you see in 2019, 2020, Mexico has declared a safe country. Guatemala was also declared a safe country. El Salvador was also declared, even Honduras was um, alleged to be a safe, safe state. So this is how they're playing with money and destroying our lives. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Because I think people do need to have the context, right, of what is happening. When Vice President Harris says, don't come, who is she saying don't come to? Why are people coming? But, you know, what is the pull factor? Because, the, you know, the way folks talk, you would think people are coming here for Disneyland <laughs> because they want to visit um, the Empire State Building. Um, you know, that they're here as tourists trying to enjoy, or they want to gobble up, right, eat up the resources of the United States. Um, and thank you, Mary, uh, Carla, for really pointing out how they are, there's been some pull factors that are at telling people to come for the benefit of the United States um, and not for the benefit of the Garifuna people and actually to the detriment. And also to speaking to the importance of cultural competence when it comes to thinking about solutions. And we'll talk in about two, three minutes about some solutions. Um, but, you know, because when you're talking about refugee and people reaching out to say, hey, we are willing to define Garifuna people as refugees, it's like, okay, but you understand we're not trying to be cut off from our land. And that's something that we talk about in Baji all the time. There's a focus in the United States on being USian, as I would say, American, as what other people would say. Like that's the big prize in the you know cereal box, and that that's what all of us are looking for. And that if you're not looking for that, then what are you coming here for, right? And so, other than to gobble up their resources, so I think it's important that we maintain this understanding and, and um, push the line that you are pushing as Afrene that, hey, we have a right to our land. We have a right, home is not here, actually. We don't have to claim this as home in that kind of way. We're allowed to have multiple homes, right? If when, when white British people go to Ghana, they, they don't give up Britain, I promise you. They're happily living in Ghana, enjoying their lives. But whenever they wanna go back to Britain, they can go and they can still be connected to those lands. And so, you know, we deserve the same, right? We're entitled to the same thing. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, thank you, Carla. I know that we have, we're, we're running into the end of the hour and I do wanna ask a couple more questions and then do a round of talking about solutions. But part of what has happened uh, aside from this don't come, right? Is this effort um, by the Biden administration to try to, to say it's trying to address the root causes of Central American migration. And, you know, when we look at all of the things that you've talked about in terms of the root causes of Garifuna migration, that seems to be contrary to what the Biden administration is offering or, or putting out um, in terms of how they're going to address root causes. And so, Miriam, if you can help us to understand what would what would the Biden administration have to do to address the root causes of migration for Garifuna people? Like if we could wave the magic wand, <laughs> if our spirit energies were come to us and say, my children, what is it that you would have them do? How would we respond to that? <laughs> Thank you. 
Nana, yo creo de que. Nana, I, I believe that. Carlita has explained so much of what's going on in the United States and, and, and what the migrants are going through and the plan that, that, that's behind that. I will speak about this other side that I think it's important because everyone should have the right to migrate, everyone. Historically, there's migration and, and that's why today there's seats in Europe that didn't exist before. There's diversity of food, and plants, and herbals, and because it has migrated and seeds to go everywhere. That's why in the United States now people eat tortilla and who would have thought decades ago, no one was talking about tortillas. And also the migration is to, to control them and, to, and, and also have access to seeds, food, resources. We have the right to migrate. But what's happened is that the migration of years ago is not the same as today's. Today, migrate means to stop being a human being, that human being that is migrating. And, and, and above all, to suffer deep, profound human rights violation. And with, with, and what we have to say or speak is that in Latin America and in the world, there's been a projection, the colonialism of the United States has figured it out on how to sell a lifestyle, which just to, to sell that and, and to say to a lifestyle that you come here and, and even just to go and, and see the lights and the buildings, but so many migrants don't even have access to those places that I see on television. Or, not even able to get to those lights and buildings because it's a lie. It's a lie that the US government is being selling it to everyone in the world. Everyone wants to go to the US because they think that all of the issues will go away once they arrive in the United States. And in the 70s, they study this. And now a lot of people believe that they can just go to the United States and immediately they will resolve all of their issues. And then it gets uprooted from everything that these people have built in their country. Because it's a lie, it's a big lie because you can't just arrive to the yes and everything will be resolved. But what it means is you are abandoned everything have you built that it tells you that you will live a lifestyle that you've seen in television and social media when that's a lie. It's a total lie. I, as a person who I have gone to the United States, I have seen that our people have become the modern slavery. And there's a modern slavery because they don't live peaceful. It's so beautiful to be in our countries and our villages in our communities and just be around without doing anything without doing anything but when you arrive to the us you must work and work and then you just work to survive and you don't um work to live but to survive that's the truth so the root causes is that it has been a campaign to brainwash people and that they have to come to the US and to be able to acquire um, things. In, but but you, you don't acquire that when you get to the US, but then you don't have a right to live. So everyone, compañeros, compañeras who are listening today, we have the right to remain in our communities and we have the right to migrate and we have the right to remain here in Honduras. And one of the big issues is that we, when that we're not looking for a real solution for the migration issue, because there is a huge issue that I see how our, 
And this picture is that we've seen how there the Haitians are being chased with horses. This is something that we've seen when we've seen this, what the horses in the plantations with horses chasing the workers in slavery. I don't know if you you can put those pictures together, how the black people working in the plantations, cotton, sugar, where the supervisor went on the horses chasing, whipping them. And what have we seen right now, the horses chasing the Haitians a few months ago. I said menses, but it's just 30 days ago. It's incredible. I was just in shock and awe because this happened how many centuries ago when they were chasing slave, slaves and now we're seeing in the 21st century when you see people <sighs> border patrol police or whatever they were chasing our people so i say that while the u.s government while the u.s government keeps supporting financing feeding these governments these narco dictatorships these mafias that are in our country our people will keep going north because what they're doing is wrong right now they say that they're going to invest and give a lot of money to the to the suppose three countries in the north and now they've said that we are a triangle north <laughs> right so what's happening why can't they invest to for people's food why they're not investing on people to remain in their countries this is what we need to do this is what we need to do Absolutely. and as we will have this in a country we'll stop going to the united states if they guarantee us which is the most important thing in our country and also if we if our countries don't become in zone wars zone wars with that politic that the us is implementing to to combat narco traffic which is surreal hypocrisy that's not a policy to resolve the problem because the drug will keep going to the united states even in the us they produce this type of these drugs and um, they're harming black people in the United States. That's the truth. And thank you. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Looking at the, the pull of the United States. Um, when I was in Tapachula just last year, a year and a half ago, about um, before the pandemic restrictions, we talked to a sister from Angola. She had come with her husband and her six children, seven children. And she was talking about coming into the United States and her eyes were all shiny. And she was saying, I just can't wait to get to the US where we can be safe and have a place to live. And you know, I was there with my colleagues and we were like, who's gonna tell them that they're black people? And when they come into the United States that just because of the police alone, they're not gonna be able to feel safe. That it's gonna be hard for them to find housing. That it's not gonna be so simple. They don't speak English. That they're gonna have all of these issues and it was hard to talk to them about it because their eyes were so shiny. They had to cross thousands of miles in order to get to this magical place called the United States, right? And so thank you so very much, Miriam, for raising that issue, which is a very important issue, even for my own relatives, my own folks, I'm from Ghana, right? It's very important how the United States you know, shows itself and then what it does to our countries to make our countries look like a place to, to be a place that are very difficult to stay in and to be in, which also helps in the pull factor. So in these last minutes, I want to go to you, Yilian. If, you know, folks that are here that are listening, they are trying to hopefully figure out what can they do? How can they help? How can they support? And so ask, you know, how do folks help Ofrane to do what it's doing? How do people help the Garifuna people, both you know, folks that are at home, but also folks that are here dealing with the criminalization and other issues that um, Carla and Miriam have brought up? Sí. 
<coughs> me gustaría agregar eh, compañeros. Y... Ar, we like to add compañeros y compañeras. I invite all of you. There is an article that the consensus of the commodities, because this in this article it explains how Latin America. I'm I'm trying to. The, the Latin America, it's a new order, economic order, a political order, an ideological order. The, the thing is that in Latin America, it's what's sustaining the economic boom and the raw material for the U.S. So for these countries to exploit Latin America, to exploit our territory, that means economy for them. But for us, that means extreme poverty, social, political uh, conflicts, displacement. So this cycle of migration for us, that we, we come from the so-called triangle um, north. So what that means, you have, if you go to Guatemala, you have to pay the, the police in Guatemala. You have to pay the authority in Guatemala. And then if you go into the next, um, country Mexico, you pay all of them, and then you're so poor, keep paying and paying. And then when you arrive to the US, then when you arrive to the US, they send you back to Mexico, and then you have to wait for another process and wait to see if they can give you an appointment. So, what does it mean you're still paying more? All of that. And after you go in, you into the US, they sent you back to Guatemala or back to Honduras. And again, you have to go through this process again. And that's how it is. And then at the end of the day, who's, who keeps losing? The poor immigrant. And this is how this cycle has been working because the authorities are also part of this. They have a role in this, unfortunately for us. So what we are saying is that what can we do when people says, let me go? Well, what's the law that they approve recently? was fishing and the Garifuna people live off of fishing. You can't plant anymore. They're taking your land away for you cannot plant the the title the deed. Now it says that the, the land because of the new law that now the land doesn't belong to anybody. That means that you cannot sell your territory, your land because now the government doesn't allow you. And they should be illegal. But in Honduras, they, the government um, gets their hands on the deeds and they can do whatever they want. So as I mentioned at the beginning, Ofrani is doing a hard struggle. We're not winning these struggles within Honduras. The struggle that we are, um, the struggles that we have is an international struggle. Miriam Miranda, Carlita. People say that we are a little bit radical and why people say that? Because if the government wants to offer money to us, Miriam and Carla will say, no, sir. You want to give us money because then you want us to, to work for you even if we don't have what to eat that day, we're not accepted but there are people who want to help an organization, but based on their own agenda, and we have to, to work under their agenda. So then we'll stop being Ofrane, and Ofrane will, will stop working for the community. They, they have to satisfy that someone who gave you money. Okay. So this is something that we don't do. Just wanted to, to, to explain this. I just, I'll leave the rest to Carla and Lydia. No problem. Because thank then I will you. start saying other things here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. We have 30 seconds left. Thank you, I appreciate that. It needed to be said, man. All money is not good money. It needed to be said. So, you know, how do people reach you? If you could share with us, um, you know, your, uh, if you are social media, if you have a website, quickly, if you could share that information, I'm sure they'll put it in the chat as well so that people know how they can reach out and be of support who are not gonna to try to control the agenda. 
Bueno, nosotros creemos de que es importante, Nana. Eh, en este we segundo. believe, Nana, that yes, we do need the support of people sending letters to the state of Honduras, but also support the representatives with the Senate, with the their congressmen to pay attention what's happening with the Garifuna people. We are facing a genocide and we are, this is a warning, we are asking that they're trying to disappear as, as Garifuna people. And that's why we want to caution and call on everyone to please call your senators, your congressmen and your organization to support us. And we also want to say we want to strengthen our alliances with the black organizations in the United States and Europe and all in all parts of the world. And Gillian Carlita. Well, thank you. I think we have to end it there. I appreciate you. Thank you. I think we have to end it there. I appreciate you. Please, folks, look into the chat and see there's more information about how you can reach out. Thank you so very much to my sisters, Miriam, Carla, Yilian. Thank you so very much. This was a rich conversation. Thanks again to the Institute for Policy Studies and to Curry for hosting this discussion. And thanks to all of you for joining and for engaging. I see the chat was hot. So thank you for that as well. This has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation and we hope to continue the work. Thank you so much. Oh, I